So for my lesson, I will be teaching Joshua, who is a three-year-old boy that's going on four. According to Piaget's theory, Joshua being at age three will be in the pre-operational stage out of the four stages of cognitive development. In the pre-operational stage, children begin to develop symbolic thought and they begin to develop, to develop their egocentrism. These two characteristics of the pre-operational stage are seen in a child's developmentally appropriate toys and activities such as dress-up, categorizing toys, baking, sorting shapes and textures, gardening, and playing make-believe. Also in the pre-operational stage, children begin to realize the importance of categorizing and they begin to make their transition into the concrete operational thoughts. My lesson applies to Joshua's expected cognitive ability, which is mid-pre-operational stage. The basic structure of my lesson will be cutting out cookie dough shapes and making the cookies or baking the cookies along with using the shapes for a categorizing game. So the first thing we will do is we will wash our hands. I will ask him the importance of washing hands before we bake so that we can keep our hands clean and sanitary. The objectives of my lesson include exploring cause and effect relationships that appeal greatly to the symbolic thought found in the pre-operational stage, such as realizing that cookie dough shapes will turn into cookies that we can eat when baked. I will explain this cause and effect relationship to Joshua by asking him questions as we cut cookie dough into shapes and by asking him, Joshua, what can we do with these shapes when they are put in the oven? When do we eat cookies? Another objective is to develop his psychomotor domain. Cutting out shapes in the cookie dough tests, his fine motor skills of, tests the fine motor skills of a child and will develop the dexterity in their hands and their fingertips. Another objective is, by, is categorizing certain things which live outside of our presence. While the cookies are baking, we'll have a lesson with the different cookie cutter shapes. I will bring 8x10 pictures of the shapes along with other pictures where those objects live. The cookies will bake for 10 minutes, and as they bake, I will show Joshua a picture and ask him to take the picture along to where the object lives. The cookies bake for 10 minutes, and as they bake, I will show Joshua a picture and ask him to take the picture to the corresponding picture of where it lives. Um, after he tapes it, we will then talk about the objects, the different action that the object does, how it functions, and what the object's purpose is. For example, a fish lives in water, a fish blows bubbles, swims, and eats fish food. A fish can either be big or small, or live in a river or ocean. A fish can either be eaten or kept as a fish in my fish tank. Or a more challenging object, um, an octagon represents a stop sign. A stop sign is placed on the side of the road. A stop sign keeps people safe by telling cars when to stop when I cross the street or when to let other cars pass. A stop sign is a safety object, and a stop sign keeps me safe, and, and I need to stop when I see one. <laughs> um, this conversation will build Joshua's cognitive domain as I appeal to visual learning with pictures as well as linguistic learning as I ask questions and we have a conversation about the different shapes. I will also develop Joshua's scheme as he gathers information about the objects in the world and his understanding expands about the world and the objects inside of it. After 10 minutes, the cookies will be baked and Josh and I will wait for the cookies to cool off and, I'll ask, and I will conduct an assessment of the lesson and what he learned. Some of the questions I will ask him are, so some of the questions I will ask him are, and this will appeal to his effective domain, what was your favorite shape to cut? What about that shape was your favorite? What do you remember about the mom shape or the fish shape or other shapes? Um, what was hard about cutting out the shapes? What was easy about cutting out the shapes? Do you, know, do you know about all the shapes and what was there one that you didn't know about? My pre-assessment will be a part of my lesson. A personal pre-assessment that will take place before my own pre-assessment will be asking Joshua's parents if he has any allergies. I want to make sure that there are no issues with the ingredients in the sugar cookies. The first thing I will do is test, is test Joshua's cognitive ability to make sure he is indeed developed in his pre-operational stage. One thing I will do before the lesson starts is I won't show Joshua the cookie dough yet, but I'll show him cookie cutters to create situational interest with what we are doing with the cookie cutters. I will test his cognitive ability to be able to recognize the shapes by holding up the cookie cutting shapes to Joshua and asking him to define what they are. If Joshua does not recognize him, then I will recognize them, then I will scaffold him by holding up the picture of it and see if he recognizes it. If not, then I will provide further scaffolding and tell him what it is, then later in the lesson I will ask him if he remembers it. The next pre-assessment I will do is to test Joshua's psychomotor domain. 
Keeping in mind his will to power, I will let him take the lead with the first shape, point to where he needs to press the shape down into the dough, and watch how he presses it in the dough, and if he can get the shape out of the dough. If he is not able to do this, then I will scaffold him by giving him a prototype of how to cut the shape deep into the dough so that it will, so that it will be easy to get out of the dough. I will then watch as he does it the next time by either guiding his hands or using control language to guide him to his next step. By this, I will be able to determine whether cutting up the cookie dough himself is in his zone of proximal development. If it is not, then I will need to bring it into the middle where his ZPD is, but if the task is already well in his abilities, then I will need to change his abilities by adding to this task, such as having him roll out a new batch of dough and taking the initiative to cutting the next, into the next batch. Um, if, the task is, if the task of cutting up the cookies is out of a ZPD, it may cause some state anxiety, which may cause reactions of frustration or confusion. It could also cause learned helplessness, which would not help Joshua's learning in any way. This, this is why it's so important for me to make sure that the task is, per is perfect in his area of ZPD. A challenging task with the right amount of scaffolding will cause facilitating anxiety, which will push Joshua towards the dexterity skills that he needs and can achieve. If the task is too well into a ZPD, then Joshua will lose interest in the lesson and not learn the objectives that are intended for him. <laughs> okay, so a big part of setting up my lesson will be the environment in which I create for Joshua. I believe that environment plays a huge factor into my students' learning and growth. Um, since Joshua is in the pre-operational stage, he's beginning to get a grasp on his senses, such as touch, smell, hearing, and taste. Um, the first part of my lesson will take place in the kitchen, in the Hinkley, where we will be cutting into the cookie dough. In the physical arrangement, there will be dough, cookie cutters, flour to sprinkle onto the dough, spray pans, and a preheating oven. It will be me and Joshua in the kitchen. All the lights will be turned on for the right amount of brightness in the kitchen. The door will be creaked open in case it gets a little too toasty in the kitchen. And I will have soft music playing in the background to add to the sensory environment. Once the cookies are placed in the oven, the smell of cookies will fill the proximity and further add smell into the kitchen. As the cookies bake, the second part of my lesson will take place in a nearby room where I have more control over the proximity and the setting of the environment. The lesson will take place on the floor where Josh and I will sit on pillows at the same eye level. I believe that this will decrease his state anxiety as I put myself on the same levels, level as Joshua as I get into the more strenuous part of our lesson where there will be more direct teaching. The physical arrangement will include having the pictures already up on the wall and having the materials set up in the classroom. All the lights will be on for Joshua's alertness and energy and the door will be closed to avoid any outside noise that may distract from our lesson. I will be watching for Joshua's cueing to determine if, the fur if further adjustments need to be made to the environment and to make sure Joshua is comfortable and focused on learning how to categorize and on the conversation that I will have with him about the different shapes. According to Eric Erickson's social stages of development, Joshua should be in the middle of the, of the third stage, initiated versus guilt. Some ways I can test this stage um, that he's in is by observing Joshua's initiative that he takes in his task. Does Joshua seem eager to take the initiative? Does he shy away from taking control? What will Joshua do if he fails at a certain task? And will he be able to brush it off and try again? Or will he feel guilty about the task? How does Joshua handle the challenges? My role in this stage is to always be encouraging and uplifting to Joshua. I understand that if I am discouraging or dismissive, it will affect Joshua and debilitate him if he is still developing in this stage. I can also try testing the next stage of social development if I feel that Joshua is competent in, the, in stage three. Stage four is industry versus inferiority. A way I can test this is by putting a picture in the wrong place and seeing how Joshua reacts to it. Does Joshua seem confident when he recognizes its misplacement, or does he accept that I put it in the wrong place? If the first, Joshua is showing good levels of confidence, and if he takes the initiative to move it, he is showing early skills of his industry. If Joshua does not make the effort to correct me, he is showing early stages of inferiority, and he is not quite in the social stage yet. So there are several ways I can test Joshua's moral development that's, that are still natural and flow with my lesson. According to Kohlberg's theory of moral development, Joshua is not limited to any stage of the theory, but certain things will help me determine whether he is in this model, or where he is in this model. During the second stage of my lesson, I can get a sense of his development when I ask him questions about the safety shapes and ask him the importance of stopping at the stop sign or not touching the no-touching sign. 
If his answer extends to not doing those things because he will get in trouble by his parents, he will be in the pre-conventional stage of morality on that topic. If his answer is because he wants to uphold the law of the sign, he is in the conventional stage of that topic. If his answer extends to not doing those things because he wants to keep himself safe, then I would determine that this is a very post-conventional answer to the morality of the subject. Another way I can test Joshua's morality is by observing him in the cleanup after the cookies are off the pan. I can do this by first starting the cleanup after the lesson and when the cookies are off the pan. If Joshua takes the initiative to help me, I would characterize that as a high conventional stage or a post-conventional stage where he is helping me to uphold his duties or whether he is helping me to uphold his duties of making the cookies or helping me because, he's, because he has a sense of relativity. If Joshua avoids helping me and if I have to ask him several times but or promise him some sort of reward in the end, I would classify this as a pre-conventional stage of moral development. If I only have to ask Joshua one time and he helps me right away, I would classify this as a low conventional level, stage three, because he is meeting my expectations of helping me clean up. With this, I want to clarify that it is not necessarily a bad thing if Joshua is in level one of moral development. I understand that children develop on different levels, and Joshua, being so young, has a lot of time to develop fully in these different stages of morality, sociality, or cognitive development. So my sugar cookie and shades lesson is geared towards Joshua's cognitive stage, but also tests his moral and social development as well. With the right physical environment and climate, I believe that with Joshua we can both work together to create a valuable lesson that will further his development in all these areas. It will be a fun and nurturing lesson, and I can't wait to teach Joshua.